good father, the loving father, the merciful father. Thank you for an opportunity to gather again today. Thank you for an opportunity to share in your word. Today by your word, bless us. Be glorified in Jesus' name. Amen. Love a good, good father. It's who you are. It's who you are. It's who you are. And I'm loved by you. It's who I am. It's who I am. It's who I am. You're a good, good father. It's who you are. It's who you are. It's who you are. And I'm loved by you. It's who I am. It's who I am. It's who I am. You're a good, good father. It's who you are. It's who you are. It's who you are. And I'm loved by you. It's who I am. It's who I am. It's Happy Father's Day, everyone. Yes, you heard me right. Whether you're a mother, a father, an uncle, or an aunt, a boy or a girl, you can still be celebrated as a father if you perform any of the duties that a father does. For example, if you provide for someone, if you show them care, if you show them love, then happy Father's Day to you. Now, all the fathers in CMFI Newfoundland are duly acknowledged and appreciated. Time and space will not permit every picture to be put up there, but we believe you understand. So once again, we acknowledge and appreciate you. Now, children, today we have a very interesting topic as usual, the parable of the prodigal son, one that I like to call the parable of the father's love. So, our text will be from Luke chapter 15 from verse 11 to 24 and our memory verse is Ephesians chapter 6 verse 1. Now, please pause this video after now and take some time to prayerfully read through the scriptures. There might be something that God would just reveal to you, something that can transform your life. And then afterwards, let us meet to discuss, for example, why the Lord Jesus Christ told this parable. What does he want you and I to learn from it? Now, if you have any thoughts or comments, please email cmfinlkids at gmail.com. See you in a little bit. Let's quickly go through this um, story. It's a story about a father who shows a lot of love to his son. And it's evident because he carries the son wherever he goes, day and night. Now the son is grown and now makes a ridiculous demand and says, Daddy, give me my inheritance. And so the father obliges him. So he takes all his inheritance, so much money in a bag, and then goes on a journey to a far country. But after some time, he spent all the money and then he began to be in want. He was hungry. But then he remembered home where even servants used to sit on the table to eat and then the son made the best decision anyone could ever make he decided to go back home to the father so he goes back to the father and the father is very delighted to have his child back he even throws a big party in celebration and they lived together happily ever after. Wow, that's the father's love. So let's let's go through this story once again and let's highlight a few points. In verse 12, we saw the child ask a very terrible question, or rather, he made a terrible de demand, saying, Father, give me my inheritance. Now, why do I say this was cruel? Because 
inheritance is received by the children after the father has gone to be with the Lord. That is after the father has passed on. And so by the son asking this, he was saying essentially that I don't care about you, that as far as I'm concerned, you're a dead man. Finished. Bye. Done. What would the father normally do? The father would, dis would disinherit that child immediately, disown the child, but not the good father. Anyway, let's go on in verse 17. The child came to himself. This is very important. He came to himself. He came to himself. There are many people who have not come to themselves. And what are the reasons why they have not come to themselves? They are in this they are in despair. They believe nobody loves them, nobody cares about them. But indeed, there's somebody who cares about them, and that's our Heavenly Father. So let us pray for such people. They need our prayers. Let us pray. Let's take a moment to pray. Yes, Abba Father. Today we ask that for as many who think they are not loved, as many who feel lost, as many who are in despair, that today you will make them like the prodigal son to come to themselves, to realize that your arms are still open to receive them, that you love them, and that you would welcome them home. Let every one of our family members and our friends let them receive your touch today. Minister to them. Draw them back to yourself. Cause them to realize that you still love them, even as of the beginning. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, Amen. Now, if you prayed, thank you for praying. So, let's move ahead. In verses 18 to 19, the Bible records that the child thought within, his, in, within himself and said, I will arise and go to my father, and I will say unto him, thus and thus. The first thing is, I have sinned against heaven and before thee. In other words, I admit that I have done wrong, which is good. Admittance of guilt is good. Secondly, I am no more worthy to be called thy son. In essence, please forgive me, which is another good thing. Then thirdly, make me as one of thy hired servants. Mm -hmm. What do you think? It's like saying, don't forgive me totally, but only partially. That is, rather than make me a son again, just leave me. Let me be a servant without inheritance. Anyway, remember this were his thoughts. He had not said this to the father. So... On his way home, the father ran to him because the father was waiting for him, welcomed him back home warmly, and then the son wanted to confess to the father. And now these were his actual words. He said, I have sinned against heaven and before thee, just like he had thought. Secondly, I am no more worthy to be called thy son, just like he had thought. But when he was going to call himself a servant, the father would have none of it. He said, no, don't mention it. You are not a servant. In fact, the father stopped him and said, My son, not my servant. He said, My son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. Praise God. So, this shows the love of God. Are you in despair? Do you think God does not love you anymore? Well, that's just something in your head. You need to come to the realization of the fact that God loves you. He wants you back home. Come back home to Jesus. Amen. Let us pray. Abba Father, we want to thank you for an opportunity to share your word again today. May we always remember that you see us as sons when we return to you rather than as servants or slaves. Bless us as we go forth into this week. Let your name be glorified in our lives. In Jesus' name, Amen. Now let's go to our final thoughts. Final thoughts. God wants us to love and honor our dads and fatherly figures. 
not only our biological uh, fathers anyone who acts as a father who provides for us whether it's an uncle an aunt who gives us guidance who maybe prays for us shows us some kind of care shows us love they deserve that honor of a father it doesn't matter whether they are um, a man or a woman anybody who does this deserves that honor and then let's remember that we have a father in heaven who loves us even more than the father in the story god's love for us is amazing this love is awesome indescribable by words and what is the proof of this it does not just say it he proves it he gave himself for us that anyone who believes in him can call him father anyone at all just come back to the father acknowledge your fault come back to him and then you can call him father john 1 12 tells us so galatians 4 6 also tells us this in fact there's a song there we cry about father hallowed be your name hallowed be your name hallowed be your name oh yes we cry about father hallowed be your name hallowed be your name hallowed be your name this song you can put this song on repeat if you think about the father's love in fact when you think about the father's love it will always move you to tears if you think deep enough god loves us so and so let us pray